IMS. My name is Manish and I would introduce you to the world of IMS. IMS is the first institution in the country which started training for CAT and, and that was you know almost around 40 years back and when people didn't know too much about management and it has been a pioneer as far as CAT education is concerned. IMS has understood CAT better than anybody else in the last 40 years and which is why our students have done extremely well as far as you know scoring well in CAT is concerned. Today I'm going to take you to the world of CAT in through the eyes of IMS. What we understand of CAT is that it tests your ability to understand the concepts well, it tests your ability to solve questions accurately and with a certain amount of speed. There's an old saying that CAT keeps changing and rightly so. In CAT 14 also you will find that the number of questions have gone up from 60 questions to 100 and now the, the limit which used to be there in terms of time that will also be removed. So now you have 2 hour 50 minutes with 100 questions of maths and English, 50 each of maths and English and you do not have any time limit. So you can attempt maths first or you, if you wish to attempt English first based on strategy. But what has not changed in CAT for the last 30-35 years is that it has always asked you English and maths. So that's not never going to change because you know that's what the trend has said. Now coming back to the, the number of questions, we look at each of the section. Quants would have 50 questions and English would have 50 questions as I told you earlier. Within quants you will find 30 questions of pure maths and 20 questions of data interpretation. For those of you who do not know data interpretation, you can understand data interpretation as questions which are based on graphs like pie chart, bar graph, histogram, line graph. You know, it's like statistical figures, uh, but the questions based on understanding of mathematics like average and percentage, but not questions on statistics. Later on, you would understand data interpretation more. And there are 30 questions which will be based on pure mathematics. Areas like arithmetic, geometry, mensuration, algebra, which you have studied in your 10th standard. So there is nothing to worry and fear about. The areas are same, just the treatment of questions, the nature of questions are more innovative. So you need to be up to it to be able to solve those questions. As far as English is concerned, you will find that there are three distinct areas. One is reading comprehension which is passages are given, based on that you have to answer questions. You can expect around 16 to 17 questions from there. Another 16 to 17 questions you will find on logical reasoning and another 16 to 17 questions you will find on verbal ability. I would explain to you about these areas separately, but let's concentrate on two areas of mathematics, which is pure mathematics and data interpretation. If we consider pure mathematics, normally we start with number system because numbers if you become comfortable it would have a very good bearing on other areas of mathematics also within number systems the chapters which are taught are very similar to what you have studied in school it is lcm and hcf certs indices remainder you know all these things are same but the nature of questions which are asked they demand you to have a better understanding of number system they demand you to have innovative ways of solving and which is where IMS is going to take you forward and ensure that you are able to solve questions on number system. For example, you know, questions like 89 to the power 89 to the power 89 divided by 36, what is the remainder? We hardly do it in school. We don't even do it in your, you know, in our plus two or during engineering or, or even during the days of mathematics honors. In fact, it's, it's just that the areas of this, the nature of questions asked in CAD requires one to be a bit, you know, to think through a problem. You also have five options. So, you know, do not have a preconceived notions in mathematics that you need to be an engineer or you need to be a mathematics graduate to solve these questions. It's not like that. It's meant for everybody. In fact, none of the students, you know, science students, they get an exposure of the nature of questions which are asked in number system. And we have all in our times also, we were taught by somebody to to, to you know somebody make made us understand how to approach these questions and that is exactly what we would also do when it comes to arithmetic there is no change 
same chapters percentage profit and loss time and work ratio proportion allegation mixture and, and questions based on time speed and distance but the nature of questions and the treatment of approaching those questions are going to change when you were in school and when you were solving arithmetic you were going by the proper method here i would say proper method will take more time than usual so you would have to use options method to solve a question your ability to calculate fast will also play a lot of role because you need to do a lot of calculations in your mind you may have to use options to solve a question so it's very important for you to be good with calculations and your speed of your calculation is going to matter a lot in especially areas like number system and arithmetic geometry is again going to be same anyway geometry has not changed after 10th standard there's nothing has happened so you would find same lines and angles and, and you know triangles and quadrilaterals and circle but yes very intelligent set of questions are asked in cal and it demands a lot of understanding of geometry from your side another area which is a part of your syllabus is algebra again the chapters are same you have chapters like simple equations you have chapters like quadratic equation you have modulus inequalities permutation combination probability and together with geometry algebra is very very important you can i can go to an extent of telling you that more than 50% of the questions constitute algebra and geometry as far as cat is concerned and traditionally if you look at the questions of cat you would find geometry and algebra getting a lot of you know uh, significance so i would suggest you to focus a lot on geometry and algebra apart from number system and arithmetic of course you cannot ignore any of the areas the next area i would like to talk about is is a new area for a lot of you which is data interpretation data interpretation is something which is purely dependent on your ability to calculate fast if you know how to do plus and minus in your mind if you know how to square if you know how to multiply if you know how to divide in your mind then you are a champion as far as data interpretation and concern is concerned and one very good thing about di is that you don't have to prepare much if once you are able to reach a certain level of calculation speed after that this 20 marks is yours and it's a very critical component of overall mathematics how can we do well in mathematics i think we all understand that we need to get over with the syllabus i would always suggest that you should finish your entire cat syllabus in one month's time don't solve all kinds of questions but at least go through the various kinds of you know uh, formulas which are there and then start practicing maybe i'll talk about it later on once we meet inside the classroom let's take up english it's a very interesting section what is the syllabus of english there's no syllabus of english what can come in english anything which has been ever been written that is your syllabus in english so i personally feel that there are two pillars of cat preparation one is ability to calculate fast which i call it speed mathematics and the second one is to have a command over word meaning let's let me test your meaning you know word meaning do you know the meaning of kairos square or for that matter where is mo do you know the meaning of succinct or do you know do, do you know the meaning of let's take up very similitude now if these words are sounding foreign to you that means you need to do a lot of hard work as far as improving your words are concerned because cat either directly or direct, indirectly through reading comprehension through verbal ability tests your understanding and knowledge of words it may not come directly many students say okay many of the mentors also say okay you don't need to do word meaning uh, because you know they don't ask you too many questions but that's not the point english is made of words so if your words are good you would automatically be able to do very well which are the three sections as i told you earlier reading comprehension verbal ability and logical reasoning coming to reading comprehension you would find typically around 5 to 6 passages which are around 16 to 17 questions questions are both direct as well as indirect which are inferential in nature what are the areas which are asked amazing length and depth as far as cat questions are concerned you will get areas of science and technology areas like literary theory painting from sports economics biotechnology exploratory science there's hardly any area philosophy psychology so, so, sociology political science how do people do well in cat they do well in cat by reading variety of subject matter so that you are able to understand the vocabulary of all those subjects 
Once you understand the vocabulary of these subjects, you will automatically feel comfortable. For example, let us see that if I give you an article on golf. Now, if you have never followed golf or played golf, it will be difficult for you to understand what is a put. Right? It will be difficult for, to understand the vocabulary of golf. And if you don't understand the vocabulary of golf, maybe you will take more time than usual to solve questions of, on golf. But imagine if I give you an article on soccer, or for that matter on cricket, would you not understand properly? Yes, you would do. Which is why I, I say that it's very important for you to understand the vocabulary. So when you read different kind of things, you are able to understand the vocabulary of it and thereby you are able to do well. Let's take a verbal ability. There are almost 18 to 20 different kinds of questions on verbal ability. Questions on parajimbal sentences, questions on grammar, and what are the areas of grammar? You need to focus on seven, you know, grammar is more of a, what do you say, practical kind of a grammar, error finding grammar. You don't know, need to go to Ren and Martin and take, you know, a traditional form of grammar. What you need to do is to focus on various kinds of errors, like the kind of errors which you've never focused during school time, like parallel construction errors, errors of modifiers, errors of related to, uh, let's take up, you know, dangling modifiers, misplaced modifiers, clauses, principal clause, subordinate clause, subject verb agreement error, when you have errors and pronoun, tense errors, right, even punctuation errors. These are the favorite of cat as far as asking questions. And you should have a command over grammar to solve three to four questions of grammar which comes in CAT. Then you have questions on summary. There will be a passage given and you have to find out a summary. One of the most important questions and a favorite of CAT in English is completion of theme. I will discuss about it later on when I, you know, in my next video as to how to approach these kind of questions. When you get questions on fact, inference and judgment, which is a part of mobility, you get questions on jumbled paragraph, you get questions on fill in the blanks, you get questions on closed test, one particular subject area being given and then fill in the blanks. You get synonym and antonym questions. You get even questions on syllogisms. You get questions on strong arguments, weak arguments, probably true, definitely true, probably false questions. You also get questions on finding out an argument or a conclusion. You get questions on assumption, inference. You know, so you, you, you see there are 18, 19, 20 type of questions and out of these, you may get six to seven different kinds of questions. You need to have a command over these. And you should have a clear cut strategy to solve these questions. The last section which I want to discuss is logical reasoning. Please understand that there are two kinds of logical reasoning. One is a structured reasoning, the other is unstructured reasoning. The unstructured reasoning is a puzzle oriented reasoning, which is a favorite of CAT. Structured ones are the ones where I will give you a method or a formula of solving and you'll be able to easily solve a question. But CAD has not been, you know, uh, asking these kind of questions uh, for the last so many years. They normally focus on questions which are unstructured, which is puzzle oriented question. And that requires a lot of practice. So you get questions on, let's take up input output. There, there are special kind of questions of input output. When once we start teaching you, you would understand that. You get questions on sitting arrangement, both linear as well as circular ar arrangement. You get many questions on games. In fact, games are a favorite of CAT. So questions on game theory is something which you would find every year in CAT. There are truth test questions. You know, one set of questions are lying and another set of questions always speak truth and you get questions on that. So overall, if I have to say, how do you do well in CAT? I think the first thing is to understand that CAT tests your aptitude. So what is required is practice because aptitude improves through practice, it is proven. So two things are there. One, one has to start early so that you can work on your quantitative techniques and you can read various kinds of magazines and you know magazines like Economist and Outlook and Business World and Business Today. And, and also if you can read a couple of novels which, which would expose you to the, uh, to the area of art, culture, politics, society, I think that would really take your, and I would strongly suggest you to do some books which are in word meaning. In fact, my favorite book is What Power Made Easy by Norman Lewis. And I personally, I can vouch for that, that this book has transformed the lives of many students, including me. I've been a huge fan of this book. There's another book by Rosenberg, All About Words. So I would really consider you to do all these things. If you have questions, as far as I am concerned, you can always write a mail to me at manish at imsindia.com. I'd be very happy to answer your questions. Otherwise, you can, you know, on WhatsApp, my number is there, 86510. 37003 you can you know you can whatsapp me 
whatever your queries are, uh, you know, I will try to answer your questions as soon as possible. In my next video, what I will do is that I will start training you as far as quants in English is concerned. So maybe, you know, uh, I would start off with speed mathematics because I, I, I told you that I consider it as a pillar of uh, as far as quants preparation is concerned. So I would start off with speed mathematics and then go to word meaning. So my couple of, you know, videos of next videos of mine, you will find focusing on improving your word meanings and on, uh, on, on speed mathematics. And then I will take you to different chapters of quants in English. Thanks a lot. Pleasure talking to you.